many this morning. Just this is Holy Week beginning, and there are services throughout the week, all at 7 p.m. tonight at Springfield, Cambridge. Tomorrow night here in Cando Church. If you're able to come along at 7 o'clock, it's going to be a lovely day tomorrow. And if we're well worth coming at 7 o'clock, Tuesday at St. Matthew's, Wednesday, Kenmuir, Thursday, St. James, Friday, Wood Hill, Evangelical. And next Sunday morning, if you're feeling fit, you can come up the counties at 6 30 for a sunrise service. And if you don't feel like climbing the counties, 7 o'clock. There will be a service in the car park at Crow Road, so that's next week. Tea and coffee in the North Hall will be served after the service. Can I say a very warm welcome to all who are here today for the baptism. You are most, most welcome. Just take a moment now and say hello to somebody that you maybe not seen this morning and wave to them.
the uh, young people, uh, you can come up also if you're not so young, not so young anyway. Um, if you want to come up, uh, you're welcome to come up to the side. Things. And he didn't even go to the bathroom for them, but he didn't. What did he do? What did he 
ir a la tienda. Este policía y wait on to that. Cross. Yes, and that's what he was going to start. And he knew if he went on to that, which was not what everyone was expecting, they were not expecting him to be focused on that or do that, and he knew if he did that, he would save everything around the people. And that is why we turn these ham branches into crosses. And I believe we've got some of them that are about to say, is that right? But well, we're going to do that after another very special time in this service. Do you know what's happening next? Yes. I think we'll all go and have a seat, will we? And we will celebrate with yourselves in, a, yes, in your baptism. And then we will give out those hand crosses to everyone and focus on Jesus today. Thank you, Lola. Thank you. Okay, today's a special, really special day for us all here, for the Seth family, for the church family here as well. Because firstly, we're going to welcome Christine uh, into the church family here today. Uh, and then we're going to have the baptism of Georgia and Kiva afterwards, aren't we? So, Justine, would you like to come out first, then your family can follow you afterwards? Yeah, just keep on here, Justine, it's great. Christine, you've been coming along here the last the 10 months or so, isn't it? It's been wonderful having you here. You found yourself in the choir as well and, and part of our church family, which is fantastic. And we are so delighted. Uh, and the girls coming every Sunday as well. One of the first people in the church here as well with you. You come here with your own choice. You come to acknowledge God's covenant of grace. You come to profess publicly your own faith in Jesus and to receive the strengthening of his spirit. There are a few questions that I ask you. Do you believe the Christian faith into which you were baptized? Do you believe in God who made you and loves you? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit and the continuing work of our salvation? Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father, we praise you for our confidence and hope in Jesus Christ. We thank you for our shared life in one church, our one baptism into Jesus Christ, and our experience of your Spirit in fellowship and service. Anoint us and bless us all today in the abundance of your grace that we may always be ready to respond to your call to commit ourselves further in Christian discipleship through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christine, may the Lord bless you with his heavenly grace, that you may continue his forever and daily increase in the Holy Spirit until his everlasting kingdom comes. Christine, in the name of Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, and the authority of this kick session, I welcome and receive you within the fellowship of this church and admit you to the full privileges of the children of God and to the responsibilities of membership within this congregation of the one holy, universal and apostolic church. May your sharing in our life together bring blessing to you and to us all. And the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. I'd like to invite your session clerks, Marjorie and Pat, to come and with me to give you a very hand of fellowship. It's been every blessing to you. Okay. Christian, believing in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and confessing Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord, do you promise to join regularly with your fellow Christians here in worship on the Lord's Day? Do you promise to be faithful in reading the Bible and in prayer? Do you promise to give a fitting proportion of your time, your talents, and your money for the church's work in this world? Do you promise, depending on the grace of God, to profess publicly your loyalty to Jesus Christ, to serve him in your daily work, and to walk in his ways all the days of your life? May God, who is the ground of hope, 
fill you with all the joy and peace as you lead the life of faith until by the power of the Holy Spirit you overflow with hope. Romans 15, verse 13. So, Christian, today we thank you. We thank you for responding to God's grace. We thank God for that grace. And we thank you for your children. And today we are now going to baptise Georgia and Kiva. And I invite your husband Chris to come up here as well. And also your uh, godparents. And I believe it is uh, Katie and Nick for Georgia and Avril and Harley for Kiva. Would you like to come up as well? Yes. I just want to stand over front here and invite the family out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, girls. How are you? Are you alright? Good girls. Good. I've just got a very simple question for the two of you. Very simple. Will you follow Jesus? Will you follow Jesus? It's good. Well, this is the beginning of an exciting journey in your lives that will last throughout your whole life. And Jesus will walk with you and always be your friend. But your parents are here to support you. They protect you. They, they have that responsibility to give you everything that's good in life. And thank God for that. And as you have heard and seen today, your mum has confirmed her faith, the faith that she was baptised into, and she's joined the church. So I ask Christian today, will you bring your children up in the Christian faith? Will you teach your children the truths and duties of the Christian faith and bring them up in the life of worship of this church? And the congregation here, the members of Cather and the regular attenders uh, here, I would invite you to stand please. The congregation of Cather Church are also invited to play their part of this baptism. So I invite all you today who represent God's church to show your responsibilities as Christ's people in this place. Do you welcome Georgia and Kiva and do you renew your commitment with God's help to live before all God's children in a kind and Christian way and to share with them the knowledge and love of Christ? Thank you. Okay, so we come to the baptism. Georgia, would you like to come first? Okay, you can stand there. I did say I wasn't going to lift you up and carry you around. Because <laughs> you're a bit late for that now. Okay. Georgia, Katie, Rose, Seth, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face always shine upon you, Georgia. Okay. Kiva, to you next. <coughs> Kiva, Mary, Sophia, Seth, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and always be with you. May his face shine upon you, Kiva. God bless you. May you stand with you home down. Okay. Congregation, let's be seated. Do you want to turn to number 796 in your hymn book and we'll sing together the Lord bless you and keep you.
the whole thing to you after this. So we'll give it to somebody to look after for you and get it later. Is that okay? Okay? That's great. And also, just to help you on your journey, Eva, it's a book for you. Bible for you. Okay. We'll just finish with a short prayer. Gracious God, touch us all again this day with the grace of our baptism and give us new lives for all, new spirits, new faith, new commitment, in place of all that has grown tired and stale and dead in our lives. Bless this family here. Thank you for them. Surround them with your grace and your peace. And may the girls grow in the knowledge of your love. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing now a hymn. We're going to sing the hymn 530. One more step on the way I go, and the uh, young people are going to be handing out the crosses to you in this hymn. Okay, so let us worship God in this hymn, um, 530. Yes, give them a big clap, will you?
Father, we gather to give thanks for your steadfast love. We see it in the beauty of this day. We know it in the warmth of welcome in this Christian family. We feel it, Lord, in the blessings of singing your praise and reflecting on your love together. And we gather to ask for forgiveness as we seek renewal of strength of heart and mind for the week ahead. Help us to focus on Jesus towards the goal of loving you with all our hearts and mind and to loving each other, friends and our families alike. Remind us this day, Lord, what it is to be a church family of Jesus at the head and the spirit as the glue that holds us together. Remind us, Lord, that no matter how far we wander, we can always come back to you. Help us to worship and adore you. Open our eyes to see what is provided for us. Our hearts to feel your grace and mercy. And our minds to focus on you and the road ahead towards your light. We do not need to ask for your grace when it's so freely given, Lord. Your love when it's so near to us. But help us to seek it. Help us to recognise when the door that we knock opens, when you open it to us as we worship today. May we be forever in your hands, forever in your care, forever in a bond of friendship with Jesus that we nurture and protect, that we value and we hold close, that we prioritise, Lord, and that we put it first. And we ask this in Jesus' name, as we say together the words that he taught us to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The reading this morning is from John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. I love you. Just as the Father loves me, remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My commandment is this, love one another as I love you. The greatest love a person can have for his friends is to give his life for them. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because a servant does not know what his master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that endures. And so the Father will give you whatever you ask of him in my name. This, then, is what I command you. Love one another. Amen. Thank you, friends. We worship God again this time. The hymn is 549. How deep the Father's love for us. 549.
just take a few moments now just to listen to some thoughts upon a reading this morning. In 1995, when my children were young, there was one video that was always on our television. That was Toy Story. I tried to show my grandsons the other day Toy Story, but they preferred Sonic. <laughs> How the world has moved. Disney was very creative when they brought to life Buzz Lightyear, Woody, and a whole gang of toys who go on journeys as friends. But there were also Andy's friends, you may remember. Toy Story is well known for its song. This song was composed in 1995 in the first Toy Story video, and it continued right through it. You've got a friend in me when the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. You just remember what your old pal said. Boy, you've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. You've got troubles. I've got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and see it through because you've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. The reading that we heard from Diane there was some of Jesus' final words, his final instructions to his disciples. And what does he tell them? You've got a friend in me. The next day, Jesus is going to go to the cross, as Rona was sharing with us with the children. And he wanted to reassure them of his friendship. I would think your final words in life are pretty important. You want to get to the point and speak words that people will remember. And what an emotional roller coaster those disciples would have been on that evening. Here they are, crowded in a small room, and it's here that Jesus shares with them. He shares his heart. He's going to demonstrate his friendship. What does he do? He gets down on his knees and washes and dries their feet. No one is excluded, even Judas, the traitor, the one who was going to hand him in. We are told that Jesus knew who was going to betray him. All are invited to be his friends. Washing their feet tells us that they have a friend, a true friend, who is willing, yes, to get down on his knees and serve. He has come for this moment. However, his greatest act of service is not washing feet, but it's going to be dying on a cross. Graham Kendrick, that great hymn writer, has caught it well. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty. Bow down and worship, for this is your God. This is your God. In that little room, the shadow of the cross fell upon Jesus. And he's about to face his final fate the next day. And he spends those final hours not wallowing in self-pity, not thinking about himself and saying, poor me, but he spends it encouraging, cajoling, instructing his disciples, who are now his friends. Two things are happening here. Firstly, God is demonstrating through Jesus his amazing love to the world. In John's Gospel, John 3, 16, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And Jesus said earlier to the disciples, The reason that the Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own accord. Why did Jesus lay down his life? Why did he have to go to the cross? Why did he have to suffer and die? He came to rescue this world from sin. The first man, Adam, brought sin into the world. Jesus was sent from God to bring redemption. Everything we have done wrong, every wrong thought, wrong deed, wrong action, since the moment of first breath to the last breath, is nailed to the cross with Jesus. That is why he is laying down his life. It's the ultimate sacrifice. It's God's sacrifice for this world. And we'll be remembering this in a few moments at communion. Jesus didn't want to be a martyr. He knew that those who look to the cross and trust in him would be healed. So like all friendships, we have a choice whether we accept Jesus' friendship or we reject it. 
and Easter is that time of choosing. Secondly, he is calling us to be friends with others. On Thursday evening, I was invited along to the local AA meeting, who meet in our North Hall, Canada North Hall. And they have a yearly event where they invite guests along. And for the last few years now, I've been invited to their meeting. And I was humbled as I sat there looking out into a group of well over 100 people who were there in that room. And they introduced themselves and acknowledged that they are alcoholic and then state the time that they have been without alcohol, which varied. One lady spoke of seven months, another 40 years. And you could feel the empathy swell up in that room. They spoke without a microphone and everyone listened intently. You could have heard a pin drop. Even those right at the very back of the hall who were standing listened with respect. And the feeling of friendship was strong because they are all on the same journey and they're all struggling with similar challenges and fears. We as Christians, followers of Jesus, are also called to be friends, to listen to each other, to understand each other, to show kindness and grace and generosity. We are friends who are committed because we serve the same Lord who calls us a friend. Jesus is our friend, our saviour, our Lord, and he calls us to be friends with each other. It's not difficult. When he finished washing and drying the disciples' feet, he said, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. We're going to come to communion, the very heart of what our faith is all about. Today, we've experienced our two sacraments, baptism and communion. And this hymn will help us to prepare our hearts. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And we sing together hymn 547.
We are delighted to have visitors with us today and uh, delighted that you're sharing uh, in worship with us, especially around uh, the baptisms. And you may wonder, should I take communion or not? Can I say that no one is excluded from communion? Jesus didn't exclude anybody that night in the upper room. What I'd like to say to you is, if you love Jesus and you follow him, please share the communion with us this morning. If you're not at that stage, if you don't want to take communion, that's fine. Just simply pass the trays on when they come to you. It's entirely your choice and nobody will think anything of you either way. But you are welcome, you are welcome to share with us. So we listen to the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper according to St. Paul. And these words were written by the Apostle and words which we use, churches use all around the world, of all denominations, we hear these words of Paul. He said, the tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself, that on the night of his arrest the Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way he took the cup after supper, and said, This cup is a new covenant, sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. But every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. As the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common use, to this holy use and mystery. And as Jesus gave thanks and blessed, let us draw near to God now and offer him our prayers, our thanksgiving, and our prayers for others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Christ, for his perfect life on earth, for his suffering for us, and for his triumph over death, for his ascension to your right hand, and for his gift of the Holy Spirit, and for the promise of his coming again. Today we remember his work, his passion, as we begin our journey into Holy Week, and we follow this example and obey his command. Send your spirit down upon us that these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread which we break may be for us, the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ, that we receiving them by faith may be made partakers of his body and blood, and all his benefits to nourish us and help us to grow in grace. Heavenly Father, hear us as we remember the needs of your world. And we pray indeed for your world today. We pray, Lord, for those who suffer, those in other countries, Lord, who are made homeless, those who live in war-torn countries, those, Lord, for whom each day is survival. We remember Ukraine, and we ask your blessing upon that nation and your protection. We pray for countries around our world where there is famine. We pray, Lord, for those with no food today. We pray for churches which are persecuted, where Christians are under threat each day of their lives. Be with them. And Lord, we pray for our own churches here in Scotland. Bless them. Whatever the denomination, Lord, bless them. And use them to spread your word and your love. We pray for those who we know today who are unwell, those in hospital, those awaiting news of operations, those recovering at home. Be with them, gracious God. This is so we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we come to share together today in communion. And our 
Michelle and the elders around the building here. They will share with me first and then they will take the communion elements out and to the congregation. Take it, this is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this, remembering him. This cup is a new covenant sealed by Christ's blood, which was shed that the sins of many might be forgiven. Drink from it, all of you. The body of Christ broken for us. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, come and share your love. Taste and see that the Lord is indeed good.
Let us share together in the blood of Jesus. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please offer those round about you the peace of Christ that has been given them and you. Peace of Christ be with you. service of the short prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you glory, thanks and praise for the dying and undying love of our Saviour Jesus Christ. In your great goodness you have brought us into communion with him and with all who love him, and made us heirs of your everlasting kingdom. By your grace may we continue in this fellowship and live to the glory of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing the hymn today is a hymn really that helps us to continue on our journey through Holy Week. And it speaks about Christ coming into the world to be the servant king. 374, from heaven you came, helpless be. 374. <laughs>
hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen.